my fans have always talked to me about their problems and I never go, oh yeah, but it's okay. I also have this or I have this because I don't want to. I, I want to do it. And I didn't want, I wanted to do it in a way that it wasn't just one video on YouTube explaining that I have a condition. It was more of like, I wanted a very classy, you know, way to demonstrate what I have and how I've dealt with it, which is a documentary like that is well thought out and over the years, not just, I just did it for doing it. And um, that's how we did it. People think that I have the perfect life. You know, sometimes because of like social media, you show that you do, but no, I don't have a perfect life. I just have to do it one no, more no, time. Don't do it, hold on to it. You can, you can. We're gonna do it together. One more time. I know, no, you can do it. Can I get that? Can I go? My deepest, darkest secret is that I have OCD. When I first met Lele, she came in as an emergency situation. I just had to touch everything, everything. And if I didn't touch everything, like, I thought my family was gonna die. She couldn't really function. My OCD is very powerful thoughts that make me do stuff that I don't wanna do. It got to a point that I could not move. My mind and my body shuts down because of my OCD. It's a struggle that is 24 hours a day. She's incapable of taking care of herself at times, mm -hmm. but then she's capable of taking care of complex things in ways that takes no effort. It's really interesting that a person can be completely dysfunctional, and yet they can be incredibly productive artistically or professionally. You can't really create cultural impact without being a little bit off-center. That space off-center is where you find the good ones. But when you create and you put it out there, you become vulnerable. I have really serious concerns about the fact that this ended up being too much for her. Do you want to take a break? Okay. Welcome to Paley Front Row, presented by City. I'm Natalie Jarvie of The Hollywood Reporter, and I'll be your host for this Paley Front Row conversation honoring the secret life of Lele Pons. This program is presented by the Paley Center for Media a nonprofit organization dedicated to honoring excellence in television through education programs, great conversations with stars and storytellers of critically acclaimed series like the one we celebrate today, and the preservation of television's creative legacy through the Paley Archive. To learn more and to become a member, please visit paleycenter.org. Today, I'm thrilled to welcome the members of the creative team behind YouTube's original docuseries, The Secret Life of Lele Pons. Joining me are Lauren Solinsky, Unscripted Development Executive for YouTube Originals, Alicia Zubikowski, Creative Producer and Director, John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, Executive Producers, and of course, Executive Producer and Star, Lele Pons. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I feel like everybody claps in this moment, but... Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, I would love to start by maybe just giving a bit of an overview of, of what The Secret Life of Lele Pons is, is really all about and, and what you were hoping to accomplish with the project. So um, Lele and Alicia, maybe you guys can kick can us off talking about uh, what the show's all about. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's pretty much as a, a way to, you know, um, show the, the world a different side of like, it could be me or it could be anybody else, uh, how different it is in the public, like in the public eye versus like when it, it becomes personal. And I kind of wanted to do it in a way that's just like, how important is mental health, you know? And uh, also explain, you know, what OCD and Tourette's and other things are because there's a lot of like stereotypical things that people think, but I know a lot of people who have th these situations and these mental health and it's so important from my experience to understand how it is to how to get help and for you even if you know someone that has it you know it's good for the, those people that don't understand that much can see a documentary like this and then go to the person that they know that has OCD or anything and then be like I understand what you have I know how to help or let's go get help and um, that's that's some of the feedback that I've gotten is that was the most important thing for me it was the feedback how like many people, even many kids from like Harvard that are studying the conditions have also like messaged me and been like, this is amazing. Thank you. It's one of the first times that people actually can understand very well, like go through a process of what it is and what it means to have like this type of mental health um, of conditions. And also moms and children that have reached out and been like, thank you. Or like, I didn't know maybe I have this. And then they go and go and find out if they have it or not. They go to get checked up. 
and it just it, it it's just a different type of documentary because it's it just like helps you know it's not just entertainment to be honest it, it helps people and it can and it connects many other like many people together and like now I feel like with when I did this I got a lot of messages from friends that I had that also told me they had some sort of the same thing that I had so it's like it brought many of my friends and me together more because of this because you know I don't I didn't share this with many friends I'm not saying my inner circle I'm saying friends that are like celebrities like people that I would never even know that had the same situation and they brought us together even they offered to help me and I was just like I offered to help them as well and we keep in touch now we're definitely closer and who knows how many other people have it that haven't even reached out to me because maybe they're just, you know, they're not ready. When I first got to know Lele, um, you obviously can feel her energy and she has such a gift to communicate and touch so many lives, even through her social media, but in person. Um, but as I got to know her further, you could see there was so much more there and she had such a story to share. And uh, as I got to spend some time with her through John and Sam, you know, we saw a lot of things that... Um, I thought that she was ready, like hesitant to share with and open up about. Um, and that was some of her mental health struggles that a lot of her fans and, you know, a lot of people actually didn't know besides really her close inner circle and her family. So we, you know, we talked about it a lot and we realized, you know, through a, a series of a lot of discussions that maybe if she was willing to open up and share some of her own struggles, some of her own battles, the things that she kind of goes uh, through on a daily basis since, since she was a younger uh, girl, that it may be able to help so many others. And um, obviously OCD, I learned a lot. I, you know, I went in with misconceptions and I was educated and I was, you know, really, I kind of had my eyes open to what this really is. And um, I think that was really important for us to do. And we wanted it to be like an unfiltered show, just to show Lele who she really is, you know, away from, you know, being on the big screen and on social media. Um, you know, here's a girl that like struggles every morning to kind of get through each day. And, you know, it takes a lot. And it's, you know, I think what she was able to do and open up and share her story has really helped a lot of people, which ultimately, ultimately was our goal, was to, you know, help others by Lele kind of sharing her story. So it feels like this was really the first time that you opened up with your audience, your fans in this way. Tell me a bit about how you got to a place where you were ready to, to share this side of your story. Oh, well, it took a long time. You know, um, I've been a, a public figure since I was, I think, 15. And now I'm like 24. And, you know, it, it, I, can, I can say it took like three years because like I told my managers well they found out like you know they, eventually they they pick up they're like okay this is not normal or like there's something here what is it and then I had to tell them and then how supportive they were actually helped me was my first step to help me be like okay I can talk to other people except that are, that are not like my family and my parents about this that's that and then they encouraged me to actually get help uh because I you know I'm, I'm here in LA and I was like kind of embarrassed you know I, I didn't I was like so in the grind, like I wanted to work and work, work. Well, they told me like the, the most important thing is mental health. So you're not going to work until you go and get help in the, I used to go to this place called MBI when I was little and then I stopped and it was a really bad decision I did. And then I came back when, when my managers like told me to go back. And then while I was there, I met so many kids. Cause I, I went there when I was already a little, like well known. So I went there and it was different because kids actually knew who I was and I got to talk to them and they were so inspired and they were like, I didn't know you had it. Um, you are helping so many people. If you, you should say it, you should say that you have it because we didn't know. It. And now we feel kind of like happy that we have it. Cause we were like in the same club that you are. And like, you know, I, we connect with you and, and you show us that it's possible to succeed and be successful in life with having the, the condition that I, that we have. These are kids that I was with at the Rand, the patients. And you know, it sometimes it's good to have a role model or someone that, you have seen growing up, growing up a public figure have something similar because it pushes you to be like, you're not alone and you can do it. You know, if she did it, then you could do it more like a hundred times more than, than, than me, you know? And I, and I was able to talk to many of them and eventually like they pushed me, I can say to actually talk more about it. They did. And then slowly I got to, uh, to meet Alicia. I, I met Alicia with another documentary and I got to meet her and she was just like, you've never, in this too, I've never done anything with my platform that actually is, has a cause, you know, that helps with the cause. And 
it's about time. I mean, after a couple of years, I wanted to do something that was actually beneficial to other people, not only me, not just do skits and comedy. And I was, it was hard because you never know how people might react because I have been so private about it that all of a sudden I just come out with this. So it took me a while. And eventually I was like, let's film it. Let's definitely do it. Let's film it. And then after that, we decided whether to put it out or not to put it out. And then with the push of my friends and many people, and I went again to the ranch, that's when I was just like, I think it's about time. I mean, my, my fans have always talked to me about their problems and I never go, oh yeah, but it's okay. I also have this, or I have this, because I don't want to. I, I want to do it and I, didn't want, I wanted to do it in a way that it wasn't just one video on YouTube explaining that I have a condition. It was more of like, I wanted a very classy, you know, way to demonstrate what I have and how I've dealt with it, which is a documentary like that is well thought out and over the years, not just, I just did it for doing it. And um, that's how we did it. It took me a while. I was not convinced. My parents were not convinced. And then we, we, we were <laughs> and at the end. We, we decided it was, it was for a good cause. It was good. So yeah, Alicia, tell us how you got involved with this project and what inspired you to get on board. Um, well, first of all, I've known John and Sam for probably about 10 years. And we've worked on different projects. Um, mostly, I come from a sports documentary background of telling stories for athletes and, you know, at the Olympics. And um, one of the things, you know, we worked with John and Sam on a, another documentary. But while I was doing that, I got to know Lele and her story. And um, I think some of the best parts of being a storyteller are being able to, like, impact other people um, and inspire them. And when I heard Lele's story, I'm like, this is something that the world needs to hear because she had such a unique platform that she could change and impact so many different lives by opening up that it's like it, you wanted to be a part of it because you also, I wanted to be able to help tell it in um, a way that it wasn't um, like contrived or forced or anything, but just to show the real struggles of it and what, you know, what really went on it. Cause I think that's when you tell a story, um, you know, unfiltered, uh, that's the best way somebody can really see what someone's going through or learn from it. And I think that's what motivated and really wanted me to, I, I mean, truth be told, like uh, when I first met Layla, I was like, gosh, this is like, amazing. I couldn't believe it that she was able to do so much yet she struggled with so much. So I was inspired by her. Um, so that kind of just like led us to do it. And the biggest thing was, is just kind of being patient and taking time because you can't just jump right in and be like, oh, here's, here's all my deepest secret. Here's all the worst things I go through. There was a lot of things that we didn't know or come about till six months, eight months, even a year into filming that as Lele kind of got more comfortable and saw the direction of where the story and the series was heading, that she was able to open up even more with us and say, hey, you know what, this happened to me, you know, X amount of years ago, or this is something I'm going through now that I have tried to hide. Um, so for me to be a part of it, it was actually, I was thankful um, because this is one of the best stories I've ever told because it's helped so many people. And to just kind of touch on even what um, Layla was saying earlier, even people in the industry um, that work in production that worked on the show or saw it as it came out, like would message me like, I had no idea that you were doing a show like this because these are athletes and coaches and they're like, my son, you know, suffers from this or I suffer from this as, you know, uh, I had two NFL coaches actually reach out to me and said how this really like struck them. And that's, you know, older men that have been like in a professional business for 30, 40 years. So um, it just showed you how many lives this really touched. And I was uh, just happy to be a part of it and to find a way to tell the story in the best way. Sounds like you worked on this for quite a long time. If you're talking about, you know, months and a year, give us a sense of, of kind of how much time did, did you and Lele end up spending together and how much time did you put into this project? <laughs> well, we spent a lot of time together, um, which was a good thing. Uh, because I think to really tell somebody's story, you really, that a good thing? it was a great <laughs> thing. It was a great thing. Um, but I think that that's actually the best part of this was getting to know Lele and her family. Um, and before we even started filming, it was getting to spend time with them and getting to know them as people and kind of build that trust in those relationships. Uh, you know, both her mom and dad are people I still talk to now um, on a weekly basis that we check in just about daily life because you build like a, a close niche like family. And that's kind of what we all became. And I think that uh, by spending so much time, we were able to really 
um, all work together. But I would say in the beginning, before we started filming, um, we spent a couple months together, but there was a lot of times whether I was out in LA or Layla came to New York or we were down in Florida. Um, but I would say we spent a good part of a year and a half together um, a, a lot of the time. I'd say almost every day, even when we weren't filming, because we were always collaborating and talking about other things. And even then also just about life stuff, like when she was going through things, um, you know, it's hard not to be involved in that. And I think that um, that was one of the things because I wanted to learn about what she was going through. So being a part of some of her therapy, um, I was able to learn a lot as well to, you know, if I was ever in a situation, I could help her. Um, and that's, you know, become a resource for her and also know like how to handle certain situations. So the more time we spent together, I think it was better. And, uh, you know, obviously when it came to editing, um, we spent a lot of time with John and Sam and our edit team going back and forth, but Lele was always a part of the process as well. So I'd say it would be a good, you know, almost two years full circle, but a, a year and a half strong. Yeah. And you talk about building that trust and gaining that trust over time, going into this, knowing that you were going to have to be tackling some like pretty sensitive subjects. Like how did you, and, and Lele, feel free to giant, chime in too. Like how did you to create that relationship where Lele, you did start to feel comfortable uh, opening up? It took me a while. Um, she has to be so, like, I, it's hard sometimes for me to let people in obviously because it's, it's a very deep sub subject, but I think because she's a one of, one of the things because she's a woman also, and you know, once you connect with me in like another way that is not just comedy or just not just because of the show like so OCD, but you connect with me because maybe of, of a boy problem or maybe I'm going through something that has nothing to do with her, what she's doing like working with me about this documentary or anything, but we share something that is kind of like a friendship thing, you know, not a work thing. So we, we, we did go through some things. I'm not going to say it's just, you know, about, about that she was there for me when like I had a rough time doing something and she just like grabbed me and she just showed that she cared, not had nothing to do with doc, doc, the documentary or my work. It was just like something that was like just personal, not even like mental health. It was something completely different, which was like, it's like, you know, like any friend would do. It could be a boy problem. It could be like, um, I don't know, I, I, I was hurt by a friend, anything like that. And she was just there for me in those moments. And that's what made me kind of open up to her. John, Sam, you have known Lele for a really long time. Um, and I'm curious from your perspective, like why was this an important uh, story of hers to, to tell? Yeah, you know, um, <clears throat> Natalie, I remember when, uh, so when Lele was, um, at the Institute, she was talking about NBI in, in, in South Florida. Sam and I would rotate flying from LA to Florida to visit her there. Um, and I remember one time, um, it was me, Lele, and her therapist, Katya. Um, we were in a room and Lele was just, she was just crying. She, she was really embarrassed. Like she was embarrassed that I was there. She was embarrassed to tell this story. And, um, and I remember Katya mentioned something that kind of goes in full circle with the show was, um, she said, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. There's a lot of people who have this. And she was so worried that the general public would hear about this. And, and Katya had mentioned, and it was actually I, Katya's initial idea of like, you have a platform, you have a lot of people from around the world and countries that don't even know what OCD is, but there's people who have it. And you have this opportunity to actually not be embarrassed, but also, you know, use your platform. And, and there's one other person who's really done this openly, it's Howie Mandel. And, and, and Katya had played us this interview, I think it was on ABC many years ago, of Howie Mandel opening up about OCD. And I remember right then Lele's like, all the tears were just gone, dried, completely and she looked at me and all of a sudden it was like business lately she's like johnny i want to do this like just immediately turn on she's like i want to do this i want to i want to do i want to create a documentary about this i want to talk about this i want to let all the kids know that follow me all the adults know that follow me in all countries and she's like i want to do this i want to let people know that they are not alone and i think what Layla was mentioning was one of the things that she had noticed was a lot of people inside the place that she was staying at, which we call the ranch, they were all embarrassed. But then when they saw Lele there and they're like, oh my God, Lele Pons is here, is checked in. You know, all of a sudden they were like less embarrassed that it was like someone like Lele had. And she's like, that feeling that I gave them, I want to give to the rest of the world. And that was the beginning of 
why would we, um, uh, Sam and I, uh, you know, went and presented this idea with Alicia and started creating this was really that specific moment. Um, I also, uh, when John called me about this and Lele, um, something, um, something that we learned during visiting her and everything was, because uh, I, I spent a lot of time with Lele on set. I'm with her all the time. And she was very complicated. With, there's a lot of moments that she was very complicated. And I was like, this isn't really normal. And when I started learning about her conditions and everything where, you know, if you're a hair or a makeup artist and you're trying to put eyelashes on and she was like moving around like crazy because it's activating her tics. We never knew that. We're like, Lele, you just, why can't you sit still? So during a few years of working with Lele, we, you know, for what I saw was, I was like, this is really important for people to know because we assume that you're just being complicated. But the reality is there's these conditions of things going on. And, and that could open the eyes for a lot of people. And what I experienced after the show was, you know, I've had people now, um, especially during COVID, because COVID has been like a very complicated time for a lot of people, is after they watch the latest docuseries, is they're now kind of looking at their friends or friends' children or if their children and saying like, maybe they're not being complicated. Maybe there's something a little bit deeper. Maybe we should check on this. And I've had like two calls in the last like month, one for a three-year-old and one for uh, a, uh, uh, a person that a um, uh, uh, mother passed away and just lost it. And they're like, this is a lot more than grieving. You know, and what happened, it activated something that they didn't know. And we referred them to um, uh, NBI on that. So um, I, I just felt like, you know, in, in a world and a society that's so fast paced and everything, and you're you're assuming that, oh, this person is being complicated or whatever really is like, there's just like this buffet of conditions that Lele had, right? We, I mean, this is a great way to educate people on how to do that after Lele is com comfortable and everything. So that was just a big shock because now when Lele and I are on set, we have like code words and things, you know, to how to make her go through things versus like moving around and all that and, and educating everybody. All right, guys, you know, it might take a minute to get the eyelashes on. But uh, then everybody's like, oh, yeah, no problem. We get it. So it was, it was, it's been, it was really special for us to go through that and now see the results. I was going to ask if, if you guys learned something about Lele during this process, the fact that she, she was opening up in, in such a big way, it, even despite the years of the relationship that you've had with her, if there's anything that, that you learned from her during this time. Yeah, I think the one thing we've learned, and I think about this all the time, even now, you know, now that the show's actually has aired as well. And I remember even thinking about this right before the show was about to air on YouTube was um, just like, she's very brave, you know? And, you know, before I used to think, wow, she's brave, you know, you know, uh, with, with her social media and always wanting to create and, you know, with her, with her comedy. And then she's brave with, you know, I remember thinking before, you know, uh, when she, uh, she performed at the Latin AMAs and I remember thinking she was on stage while she's brave, but then, you know, but that was like a different brave. That's, you know, I think with her actually coming out and opening up and being so vulnerable, uh, talking about these things, you know, it's something I, I have, I have friends myself that have gone through some stuff and I've, I've gone, you know, and I've even, I remember, you know, I have a few friends who I just recommend therapy to and they're like therapy, I don't need therapy. You know, like they get very defensive when it comes to just recommending seeing a regular, just a, just a therapist where in the case of Lele, like not only is she brave opening up, but just the fact that she's opening up for the world and not opening up to the world because of the following or the, any of that. Lele is good when it comes to following. It's more, you know, reaching out to those, even if it's one person. I remember she told me, she's like, Johnny, I, don't, I hope even if one person of the millions that watch this um, go and seek help or I'd make them feel better, we won. She said, I don't care. Even if you ask her right now, Natalie, I guarantee she doesn't know how many views each episode has. She doesn't, she, you know, in the case of this docuseries, she didn't care about that. She just wanted to make sure that one person, and now we get letters all around the world. Her dad got a letter from someone in Africa, like someone in the middle of Africa saying like, hey, listen, like, thank you guys so much. He got a DM on Instagram. Says, thank you guys so much for this. Like no one around me, like there's no institutions, there's no doctors or anything, but what Lele's talking about, I've been feeling that and I've been called crazy since I was a kid. 
But now it's like, thank you for putting out this docu-series. I'm telling everyone that I've told my parents and everyone about what I'm feeling. I've had them watch this and now they understand me that I'm not crazy. So I think that's really been the thing I've learned the most about Lele is her, you know, it, it, it takes a lot. You know, a lot of people don't even like to tell their friends that they see a therapist, let alone going to the world and breaking down the mental struggles. So Lauren, tell us how YouTube got involved. At what point uh, did you become aware of the project and um, how did you guys end up uh, deciding to become the distributor? Yeah, so you know, a platform like YouTube makes so much sense for Lele. She's so lean into it. I mean, almost 17 million subscribers, global audience. So, you know, when she wanted to tell her story, really there's no better place to do it. So I think, you know, for me personally, uh, when I joined the project, it was actually right when I started at the company. This was my first project. And, you know, talk about a dream project, right? You've got this incredible performer. She's so famous and she's willing to pull back the curtain on her life in a way that's just so intimate and so profound. Plus, you know, actually had the ability to help people. You know, for me, it was just, it was so lucky that I was able to come into YouTube at that time uh, and be able to work on that project. And, and speak about how this kind of fits into the larger YouTube original strategy. I know you guys have been doing a lot more with endemic creators, uh, like yeah. really in the in unscripted space too. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, look, for us, our whole goal is to support our creators. Um, they really make YouTube what it is. Uh, they tell their stories every day on the platform. They're entertaining us every day on the platform. So, you know, our goal is to be able to support them when they have those, those either bigger formats they want to produce, these bigger stories they want to tell, these bigger projects that they want to take on. You know, we want to come on board and be that support for them. Uh, pair them with the right production company if they need it, pair them with the right producers and directors if they need it, uh, and really sort of, um, you know, be that support system for them. And so that's really the goal. So again, like a project like this is so on the nose for what we want to do, which is uh, be that pillar for them to stand on to really hit a global audience in a way that they really can't do anywhere else. I mean, we've got 2 billion users. So there's really no better place to be able to reach as many people as we're reaching. So, so that definitely falls into sort of our overall strategy as well. So Lily, I think you touched on this a little bit, but I'd love to know how, um, and for the team, how you ended up uh, settling on the kind of docu-series format and why um, kind of breaking it up into these different, you know, chapters, focusing on different topics, like made the most sense uh, with the material that you had. Because, um, you know, each thing is so different from each other. Like, OCD is something that you have to understand. And I give you, let's say, about, like, 20, like, and over minutes to understand that part. You know, I can't just talk about Tourette's OCD and my dad and social media comments on one thing or in two. You have to split it up so people can take a breather and understand one thing. So um, first one's OCD. That's very important to me. That just opens up. Then it's about my dad. And, which is really personal. Then it's about uh, Tourette's. Then it's about um, comments. You know, I have to break it up because also my fans are really young, so they need like chapters. Like they need like steps to do it. They won't get that much information just by if you put it all in one. You know, you have to just like split it up. You have one week to understand one. Then because of that, if you understand that, then you'll go to another one that you already have a feeling of what I really have, and then you can understand more and more the rest. Yeah, it was interesting to me watching the show to see that, you know, it was, you know, both a kind of a, a primer for, for perhaps someone who, who wouldn't know your career as well um, as others. It was also then, you know, really revealing for your, you know, your deep fans. And then on top of that, it was, it was very educational. Um, so Alicia, talk about kind of threading the needle between those three different um, kind of goals for the show. And, and how did you make sure that this would be a satisfying entertainment experience for someone kind of regardless of of kind of how much they knew about Lele or about OCD or Tourette's or these different topics. Um, yeah, that was actually something really important. Obviously, Lele has her own fan base and millions of followers on all different platforms. Um, but something that was this delicate and that so many people um, either experience or suffer from, we wanted to be able to hit 
everybody and, and you know and touch all types of platforms and whether you're young old or a parent a sibling somebody going through it yourself um so even people that didn't know who Lele was that was actually who we were like gearing towards like we knew her fans were going to watch it because they're captivated by her we actually wanted to reach the people that didn't know who Lele was so that we could a show them who she is um what she's done and like how unique uh you know what a, a unique entertainer and creative she is and also then see how this person who's had so much success um, has like struggled with it and that everybody can relate to that. We all go through our own set of things, no matter who we are or what we do. Um, so I thought it was really important. And I know we talked a lot about this with John, Sam, and then even Lauren, when we were putting everything together was that we really wanted to have people like, in, you know, kind of almost fall in love with Lele as the person. So you wanted to see her as a child and see all the stuff that she struggled with, but how, you know, she overcame that. And, and never really stopped and never uh, settled. And you can, I think by having some of the personal interviews through her friends and family in her childhood, um, it was almost endearing to kind of, you, you felt like, oh my God, I love this girl. Like you, you were rooting for her before you even knew what she really was going through. And I think that kind of drew, um, drew in like a certain type of audience that didn't know who she was. So I thought that was really important um, for us to kind of start off right off the basis. And then, you know, as I got into it, you also wanted to keep her fans. Like, what don't they know about Lele? Because they see her every day. They see all these little things that she puts out all the time. You know, all of her fans think they know everything about her. So then it was like, let's, you know, show them this whole other side that they had no idea existed. And, um, and then also, you know, kind of bring it back full circle towards the end. Um, and be able to show, you know, some of the medical stuff that she deals with that they were educated through because, you know, as they go through school or in their jobs that um, they were able to relate to. So we kind of wanted to make sure we hit every facet and every each aspect of like who our audience would be and try to hit as many different people as possible. Yeah, I noticed you had a lot of supporting voices, not just the friends and family, but also kind of experts on the subject, Lily, your therapist. Um, how, how did those kind of other voices, you know, come to be part of the project and why was that so key? Um, from us, we thought, first of all, you know, Lele could sit there and tell us, but that, you know, a lot of people could be like, well, that's just her talking. That's her own experiences. You know, as a parent or a family member, you're always going to feel for your child. So if you had that emotional arc, you would always get that from your mom or dad because they're the closest to it. So bringing in a professional, you wanted somebody who was an expert that's going to tell you the facts. So you're able to say, hey, here's what the condition really is. This is exactly what one experience is and how they overcome it. So that we presented the facts and then you had the friendship arc, you had the family arc, you had the different emotions, and then everybody could kind of take a, what they wanted away from it and kind of form their own opinions and, you know, um, understand it in different ways. So I think having like part of the medical team and experts and even somebody like Howie Mandel who experiences it himself, obviously he's a very, you know, uh, public figure and somebody that people has trusted over the years. So to hear him open up about it, it was just like, wow, like uh, kind of just really like solidified what we were, you know, trying to show in the series. So John or Sam, tell me, how did the um, the coronavirus episode come about? Um, I thought it was really interesting that, you know, you kind of acknowledged that that this could be a challenging time for people. It was, an ep you know, dur during the time that the show, you know, most of the show was filmed and done pre-COVID. Um, and then during those times, there was a lot um, there, uh, there, there was a lot of stories coming out about those with OCD um, struggling the most with COVID. Um, and, and I had so many different people, um, you know, calling in and checking on Lele specifically, you know, hey, I hope Lele's doing okay during these times. And um, even, even uh, senior executives at, at YouTube and Google calling in and checking on Lele. And, um, and you know, Lele and Sam were, you know, speaking and, you know, Lele actually was struggling a little bit. She still is today, by the way, with COVID and quarantine. And, um, you know, even this morning, she and I had a conversation. So um, it was one of those things, again, you know, um, Lele and Alicia and Sam and just wanted to like, again, just let the world know you're not alone, you know, especially those with OCD, you know, the articles were coming out, but again, you know, those, they just didn't really understand. And I think it was another moment and opportunity for Lele to let those know, like, I know, I know, I know you're dealing with it. I know these articles coming out, but it's not enough. And she just wanted it, but the show was already done and pretty much um, already. So we said, hey, but 
you know, the beauty of YouTube is we have this platform. It doesn't have to, we don't have to go re-edit the episodes that were done. She has this platform. She has a fan base of 17 million on YouTube. We could just upload it there as part of an bonus episode. We ran it by YouTube. They were, you know, just like the entire show, open and collaborative and loved the idea. So uh, we just we just put that out there. That was more of a, you know, based off all these articles and stories that were coming out with those struggling to let them know again that they're not alone. Yeah, and also uh, Lele's OCD and Lele, if you want to chime in, is more of uh, she wants to go out. She can't be isolated. You know, um, it's not like she's trying to be away from people. She loves being around people. She has to be around people. She has to be active. So for her to be confined in a in a place the whole time, you know, with her mom, and like all of a sudden the world has to stop, and it's that's just what it is, and it it, it, it started building and building. I, I and just building. use I use other people and distractions to kind of help me and distract myself from doing rituals. And since I'm alone in my house, it's easy for me to only hear about, like, hear my thoughts, and which is horrible because my thoughts are annoying. And um, and being alone, just like, what do you have to do? What else do you have to do but do my rituals? You know, like, and I don't like doing them, and I don't like being alone because I do really stupid things when I'm alone. You know, so uh, having being in quarantine uh, was pretty hard. So I would call everybody every, like every minute. If, it, if one person didn't answer, I would call another person and just tell them like, Hey, what are you doing? Just like, talk to me. Because when I don't do it, I just, I just like, I feel like, uh, I just, it just comes. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. OCD and Tourette's, everything comes back because I'm not distracted. So given that this is something that, that you're continuing to deal with, do you think that, that you would you know, you want to keep telling this story in a, in a public way for, for audiences? I definitely, uh, I think what I did with my docu series was enough for that part, but I do want to take actions in like person, going to conventions, going to help people in person, not so much because I want, you know, for like, let's say for the views or anything like that. Like I actually do want to personally do it, you know, no one has to even film it. I just want to be a part of people's lives. They need my help, I'll go. If they need me to speak in some somewhere, I'll go. You know, like that's what I want to do more. I want to be an advocate. Uh, and if I need to do interviews, if somebody wants to talk to me, I'll do it. But I will not be vlogging, let's say, or anything like what's going on. I would be doing it more in like a, a private or like it could be public, but it more of like not so social media way. So as we wrap up here, I'd love to know how how you, how did you feel about the response, and how are you feeling now that this previously very secret part of your life is is now very public? Um, I feel no, but I feel I feel um, good. I feel like the responses are great. I was super worried because you know um, it's 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 very so for many people it's very hard to accept that someone like me would have it. It's just like how everybody like you know they think that celebrities can't have this stuff or like it's impossible or like they're untouchable so me having this i thought people were gonna be like it's just fake it's not real but i came into this already thinking about that so i just wanted to i, I feel great with it because that didn't happen i feel like i got the risk it was better than what i thought i already came in you know like when you just come in okay I'm gonna think the worst, you know? So like when the, when the positive comes, uh, like I'm prepared, I was already prepared. I was like prepared for the worst and like hoping for the best. So when it, when it happened, actually like everything was okay. It was okay. So I didn't want to come in. I don't like coming in through things being like, oh, this is going to be amazing and everything's going to be positive. And no, like for something like this, which is very personal, you have to also like, you know, expect some stuff that you don't, that you don't want. So I came in with that mindset and that's why I did it in the first place. Because I was like, you know, I was seeing every single possibility and uh, I got exactly what I wanted, which was really positive. And the responses that I got were very shocking to me. And uh, it was better than what I thought. So I'm happy with what I got and everything that happened. Well, thank you all so much for, for joining us for this conversation. Uh, and, and thank you for joining us for this special Paley Front Row presented by City conversation with the creative team behind the secret life of Lele Pons. You can learn more about the Paley Center by visiting paleycenter.org. Thank you. And take care, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.